Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Hamdan Kathiran Tayban Mubarakan Fi Qad Allah Ta'ala Fi Kitabihi Al-Kareem Bada A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Al-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Subhanaka La Ilma Lana Illa Ma Alam Tana Innaka Anta Al-Alim Al-Hakim Rabbi Shrah Li Sadri Wa Yassir Li Amri Wa Ahlul Uqdata Min Lisani Yafqahu Qawli Sadaq Allah Al-Azim Honorable viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity to all our seekers of knowledge, seekers after the truth. Also to our YouTube and Facebook viewers, I greet you all with the universal greetings of peace and love. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, guidance, mercy of God Almighty be with each and every one of you. Welcome to Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, bringing the light of Islam to each and every one of you. We hope and pray, believe in brothers and sisters, that you're joining us this evening in the best of health and faith by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, our first program, our first segment, once again, for the new year, the year 2022. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our efforts that we have done and all our strivings that we have done in the past, inshallah ta'ala. Believe in brothers and sisters, I have a very special program for each and every one of you. I have actually a very special guest on our program. And so in a few moments, we will be having a very important discussion an important discourse inshallah but first let us go uh, start our program with our usual opening quranic recitation remember brothers and sisters let us listen attentively as the quran is being recited so that we will be part and parcel of the blessings inshallah ta'ala so without further ado let us go straight to our opening quranic recitation قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ شُرَكَاءَكُمْ الَّذِينَ تَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ أَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُوا مِنَ الْأَرْضِ أَمْ لَهُمْ شِرْكٌ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَمْ آتَيْنَاهُمْ كِتَابًا فَهُمْ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِّنْهِ بَلْ إِنْ يَعِدُ الظَّالِمُونَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا إِلَّا غُرُورًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُمْسِكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ تزولا ولئن زالتا إن أمسكهما من أحد من بعده إنه كان حليما غفورا وأقسموا بالله جهد أيمانهم لئن جاءهم نذير ليكونن أهدى من إحدى الأمم فلما جاءهم نذير ما زادهم إلا نفورا Welcome back to our program. That was our opening Quranic recitation. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful uh, words from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever blessings would have earned from that recitation, we hope and pray that it will be shared upon each and every one of you. All our brothers and sisters who may be affected with any difficulty, hardship in life, we hope and pray that the blessings earned will be shared upon each and every one of you by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our program this evening, Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad, is coming your way with the kind compliments and the courtesy of LNS Algo's Customs Brokerage Service for accurate, reliable uh, customs brokerage service. Then you can make contact with them on telephone number 225-5495 or 5010991 or visit them at their head office, 49 Public Road, Kitty in Georgetown and also their branch office, Lot 10A Public Road, Cornelia Ida on the west coast of Damara, VNP Supermarket 20 North Leonora Public Road on the west coast of Damara, Wolf Furniture Store Public Road Leonora on the west coast of Damara. You can make contact with them 268 3913 for more information with regards to the products and services that they offer. Dollar Empire Incorporated and Dinar Trading, Lot 1 Lamaha and Cumming Street. You can make contact with Brother Iqbal 231 7293. 
Gafsen's Industry. Their head office located at Rome, Magdum on the East Bank of Demrar. 226-3666-225-6412 is the number to call and you can able to have your information with regards to the various products, the services that they offer there as well. Bacchus Drug Store, 24 Safan and Ho Street in Georgetown, 227-2406 or 650-2255. You can contact Brother Bobby. Westside Taxi Service, 38 Lagrange Public Road on the West Bank of Demara. Make contact with Brother Azhad, 500 4066 or 500 That is the number to call. R and S Ali's Trucking Service, 63 Triumph Village on the east coast of Damara. You can make contact with Mr. Ali there, 625-3826 or 645-3207. And also in memory of my dear and beloved parents, Nazar Muhammad, Bibi Akil Muhammad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, bless these brothers and sisters, bless their business, bless their earnings, and may this be a means for them to enter into the Jannah and the parties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay tuned, believing brothers and sisters, for more of Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Our reminder of the day is next. And inshallah, when we come back on our program, we'll have that very beautiful discourse, that discussion I've mentioned to you about my guests at this time, Sheikh Safras Bakas, who's no stranger to the Muslim community in our country here. Sheikh, alhamdulillah, is the Imam and also a interfaith chaplain in New York. He's actually the Imam for Masjid Abedin. And uh, prior to that, Sheikh would have done tremendous, tremendous uh, Islamic work right here in our country, serving with the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana and also many other uh, non-profit organizations as well. So let us go to our reminder of the day. And inshallah, when we come back, we'll have that discourse by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. that happens in your life you take a nice picture of it and push it up doesn't it happen nowadays watch out be careful people are suffering and struggling why the evil eye is the truth the hadith says you are inviting people to have the evil eye on you look what I ate Wallahi, I've seen people's profiles every meal they change the picture why because I had turkey Wow did you have turkey and I had this and that and this is the juice I had and the drink I had and this is where I went and this is the hotel I stayed in and this is how beautiful this was this is the dress I bought and this every single thing and every while you dress your child and the picture is up and you dress another child and the picture is up Wallahi there is a lesson go back to Surah Yusuf there are two times that we learn a lesson in this surah in this regard <laughs> One was when the brothers were all entering into that particular uh, palace or into the, the ministries uh, in order to get their food. The father says enter separately. And one of the reasons mentioned in the books of Tafsir is so that the people's eye does not catch you all and does not affect you with the evil eye. That was one of the lessons that we learned. قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا. And here as well, the father says, do not relate this dream to your brothers. So my brothers and sisters, think for a moment before you upload your pictures and before you actually put your food and everything else. You know, we are not saying that uh, you should divorce yourself completely from technology. But what we are saying, make good use of it. Make the best use of it, but do not use it to destroy your own self. You can, you can tell genuine people sometimes some goodness you've been in, but it does not have to be everything. Because let me be honest, you send one, two, three, ten pictures. And some people who see it are wishing for it all their lives, working towards it, and you have it with so much ease. Do you think they will be able to digest it? There will come a stage in their lives when they start feeling something towards you. Look at this person. They have heaven on earth and they don't know the problems you have in, the, in, in this dunya. Imagine if we were to put up profiles about the bad things that happened in our lives all the time. We would be living in gloom and doom. But man is such by nature. He wants a good picture of himself out. He wants a good picture. Everyone. 
we want a good image. So there's no harm in portraying that good image, but it does not need to be the finer details of your life. Leave that between you and your loved ones and those who shared it. And sometimes if you really want, perhaps once in a while, you may want to share it with a selected few. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a powerful and a beautiful destiny. Welcome back, believing viewers. Yes. Alhamdulillah, I have a very special guest on my program this evening. Uh, Sheikh Safras Bakas. Many of you would have known Sheikh, alhamdulillah, um, working with the Central Islamic Organization as a da'wah worker many years ago. I know Sheikh is the Imam and also uh, an interfaith chaplain in New York. I'd um, like to welcome Sheikh Safras. Welcome to our program, hey. Let's Talk Islam with Imran Muhammad. Um, it is an honor, um, again, once again, to have you. Um, so we can able to have this discourse, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your effort, and may this be a means for you to enter into his Jannah and paradise. Thank you so much, uh, our dear brother Imran. I want to thank you uh, for the excellent job that you're doing, and may Allah reward you as well for the efforts that you're making to spread this peaceful message to the entire uh, Ghanaian community and particularly the Muslim community. Um, mm -hmm. It's an honor to be on your program and I'm hoping that we will have have a fruitful discussion within the sure. short time span that we share on this program. Alhamdulillah. Welcome once again, Sheikh. Um, Believe in viewers, respected uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity. Um, Sheikh Safras, no stranger to the Muslim community here in Guyana, like I've mentioned before, he is an Imam and also an interfaith chaplain uh, in New York. Actually, he is the Imam for Masjid al-Abadin, located in Queens, New York. Um, Sheikh, as an Imam in New York, um, you are involved in various Islamic work, um, Dawa work, for yeah. example. Um, what are some of the things that you can able to share with us as an Imam, as an interfaith chaplain in New York? Um, how these things can able to benefit us here locally in Guyana um, for us Imams to help the community inshallah. So first of all it's a very important question um, the way I look at my role as an Imam mm -hmm. is uh, Imam is perceived to be a, a shepherd and a shepherd has an obligation to ensure that the flock is actually taken care of to ensure that the flock is safe and is not out of the flock so to speak like a sheep moving away from that flock mm -hmm. um, so an Imam while he has his responsibility to provide um, spiritual care for the community day-to-day mm -hmm. -day activities of leading the salah uh, providing support at the time of death and um, burial right. and also nikah and these other aspect of uh, being an imam there is a broader responsibility as an imam which I'm actively engaged in um, mm -hmm. in New York. Number one, we are living in a multicultural and multi-religious community right. that faces a large amount of uh, issues, social mm -hmm. issues, and beyond that. Right. So, first of all, um, we have interfaith engagement. So, okay. despite all the differences of religious uh, groups in terms mm -hmm. of their faith background, there are common um, issues that all groups they face, mm. uh, social issues, whether it is uh, domestic violence, whether it's the rise of crime, whether it is issues with hate and xenophobia, Islamophobia. Right. So we come on that common, uh, common ground right. to discuss these matters and see how we can help mm. and assist the community uh, in solving some of these issues, um, spreading the message of love and rather than allowing our faith to divide us, mm -hmm. we um, and I know in Guyana we do not have that problem, right. but in many parts of the world there is this issue of tension behind uh, behind when, when it comes to religion True. and practicing yeah. religion. So that is one of the, one of the things. Uh, the second thing that we are actively engaged in um, as a imam in New York, we work very closely with the law enforcement mm -hmm. because um, w religious leaders within the Muslim community and beyond the Muslim community uh, feels that they we have a role to play, we do have a role to play. How we can help the broader community mm -hmm. in dealing with some of the, the problems that is there. Reduction of crime, right? right? Um, so we have workshops, 
where we can uh, guide our youths to live a particular way of life, mm -hmm. to distance themselves from crime. So the Imam plays that role and we sit in the table mm -hmm. with the NYPD. A matter of fact, I am a clergy liaison with the NYPD. And the NYPD in, in New York, uh, specifically in, in that, uh, that state, mm -hmm. they have a citizen police academy where they select religious leaders to be a part of this training, where they, they're exposed to various training so that they may be a conduit between the NYPD and, and the community, so to speak. So that is one of the roles of, of the, the imam basically there. Uh, other than uh, issues with crime and domestic violence, I think uh, that uh, one of the things that I am so passionate about as an imam, which we should always be passionate about is the uh, providence of uh, emotional care for people. Mm. I think that's very uh, very important point. Yeah. Sheikh. Um, I, I think people have the tendency uh, of just r confining themselves only to the religious aspect, like that of leading salah, um, doing the Friday sermon, and so on. Um, and like you mentioned before, there is a actually a broader picture yeah. um, to being an imam and functioning as an imam, and to look at the society at large is very, very important because like you've mentioned, um, you're like a shepherd that need to take care of your flock. Yeah. And so people will have um, social problems, they may have mental issues, yeah. mental health issues. Yes, of course. Um, and so that, that is very important that as, a, as an imam, you provide that necessary guidance, yes. um, so to speak, to the people. Um, yes. So that is a very important point. Yeah, that's yeah. It. So, for example, uh, as an imam, we may not see a large attendance coming out to the mosque. Mm. And rather than <coughs> you pointing your fingers at the attendees, why are they not coming to the prayer? Yeah. We need to ask ourselves the question, is mm -hmm. there any underlying issue this person is actually facing? Mm -hmm. um, the life events of people affects them, right? right? Positive or negative. So whatever people experience in their day-to-day -day activities mm -hmm. affect, affect them. Right. Uh, spiritually, emotionally, and mentally it affects them. So as, as an imam, we have to reach out to people rather than, you know, and lend our shoulders for them to lean on, mm. have this open arm mm. concept to embrace people when they're going through this. this, this Be a little bit more interactive. Uh, interactive. And also, uh, there is this key thing about emotional intelligence. The mm. Prophet ﷺ was a man that was concerned about the emotional state of people, and he will look at them and try to comfort them emotionally mm. with his words. So when we speak as Imams to people, we have to be careful of how we talk mm. with them, how we communicate mm. with them, to win them over right. and to help them in their lives, in their struggles that they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think that is important. And here in Guyana, I, I think that our Imams are doing an excellent job, yes. but they need resources mm -hmm. to help them in this. Indeed, uh, indeed. In this, and I think their religious organizations mm -hmm. uh, definitely um, mm -hmm. should work alongside. I'm not saying they are not, mm -hmm. but they must be intensified effort to yes. work with yeah. the imams mm -hmm. to provide, to provide the, the resources, resources yeah. that they need mm -hmm. to help them to function in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, as imams, my humble advice will be: mm -hmm. let's be aware that our responsibility does not conf is not confined within the confines of the mosque, that you have to be engaged, or we as Imams must be engaged mm -hmm. in helping the broader community, whether they're Muslims or not, mm -hmm. whether they share your faith or not, mm -hmm. and also be th that person that listens to the concern of the people and provide that empathetic care for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, uh, especially our youths today, you know, like, um, if we do not provide the right guidance and the teaching and be there for them, uh, the social media, mm. you know, mm. uh, impact them negatively and positively. But there is a, a diverse effect of kids confining their time on social media and they're exposed to things that Indeed. the older generations are not exposed to. Indeed. So imams need to, to mm. be aware of that as well yeah. and try to help the community, mm. inshallah. Yeah, it is uh, very important that um, we focus 
uh, spend some time with the youngsters and the youths in the community. Mm -hmm. um, those are the ones, obviously, who will now have to take up the forefront yeah. when us as imams and the older folks, they go back to Allah. And so if we don't make that, um, make those provisions now for them yeah. and put that system in place, then, um, you know, how, what, what type of leaders we will now have for the future. So that is very important, um, Sheikh, um, with regards to uh, the Imam at work, Alhamdulillah. One other thing, I know that um, during the course of the year that have gone by, we were struck with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of restrictions, for example. We have what is known as the new norm. Uh, many of our brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in humanity, will agree with regards to, um, for example, when we go to the masjid, we now have to practice the, the social distancing, we wear our mask, for example, we have to sanitize, and this is according to the legislations of um, the country and diff in different parts of the world. Um, Sheikh, um, many people may have concern as well with regards to the new norm, so to speak. And what sort of advice you can able to give with regards to this um, situation? So, first of all, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he tells us very beautifully that Allah tests us in various ways. Right. Among the ways Allah tests us by is through sickness. Mm. He said that Allah brings down sickness and He has the cure. We are faced with a pandemic. Mm. And when we're faced with this pandemic, we ought to respond in a particular way. Right. Because this is not done by our will. As Muslims, we believe this is by the permission of God. Correct. So, but when these tests and these trials come, how do we respond? Now, with the new norm, we have to look at the broader picture mm. and understand that the safety of the lives of people takes precedence over our individual safety. Mm -hmm. Community benefit rather than individual benefit. And this is a religious, religious, um, religious principle, an Islamic religious principle. And therefore, you will see in a lot of the Islamic rulings mm -hmm. that when communities are harmed, when a group of people are harmed, that the ruling becomes a little bit more slackened. Right. There's the, certain concessions, so, so, cons concession. so uh -huh. to speak. So if you have excessive rain falling, can may cause harm or excessive, um, should I say, snow a snowstorm? Mm -hmm. That rather than going to the mosque, if you have a drought, drought, yeah, yes. that, yeah, like that, mm -hmm. right? You can pray your salah at your in your home mm -hmm. rather than going and perform your salah in congregation mm -hmm. in the mosque, mm -hmm. right? Because of the safety of your life and that of the community, mm -hmm. and therefore, we have to ensure that we know that the lives of people are sacred that's one of the objectives of the islamic law definitely one of the objectives the paramount objective of the islamic law is the safety of life if you save a life mm -hmm. it is as if you save the life of the entire humankind yes. and if you take a life it is as if you take the life of the, the entire humankind yes. and if we as muslims f fail to understand this reality and is somehow pulling and tugging among ourselves uh, about a branch issue of praying shoulder to shoulder or wearing a mask mm -hmm. and put your life and that of your family and that of your community in danger then you're going against the prophetic way you're going against the Islamic way and Islamic teachings so safety of life takes precaution, uh, yeah. precedence and I'll advise our brothers and mm -hmm. sisters that, um, that you have an obligation to ensure that you take all necessary precaution basically to safeguard your life and that of your family and the community now the other important thing with the pandemic right yeah. the pandemic is here in our midst and a lot of people are going through so much emotional trauma yes there's fear there, there is a there sense is, of there, yeah there, there is fear there, there is a is, sense of uh, there's a sense of fear yeah there is right yeah. and you know, rather than you know prolonging our discourse uh, uh, about the the thick issues which people still have a hard time in, in grasping with this new norm, mm -hmm. uh, we need to come together 
and look at the broader picture, and that is the safety of the lives of people. Right. The second, the second thing that I, I'm saying that we have to look at how we help our brothers and sisters and the people within our community that has this fear, mm -hmm. economical fear, in terms of their finances. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not able to work. Mm -hmm. I can't go out to work. True, true. People wake yeah. up in the morning right mm -hmm. now and they're thinking, where would I get resources to take care of my family? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you know. Yes. So. Religious organizations, Muslims, and I, which I'm sure must complement all the organizations. Indeed. Whether it is the Gans Islamic Trust, whether it's the CIOG, whether it's the other organizations mm. within the Muslim community, right? That it that came on board and fulfilled this religious obligation. Indeed. And this is, you know, when we provide this type of relief, um, uh, our community will be a better, yeah. a better it place. Will, it, will, yeah. it will put some sort of some comfort in, comfort the, hearts in the hearts of the people. Yeah. And it's very so important, Sheikh, we must um, you know, recognize the effort that those organizations have made in the past. Um, since the pandemic came, um, both the Guyana Islamic Trust, the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana, and the Dara Looms, and, and I guess, the Dar as well. Dara Looms as well, and all the other um, non-profit um, non organizations around. Yeah. Um, they have contributed tremendously in helping the lives of every single um, person. The government did, well, and did well. Yes, the yeah. government played a very vital part, part in the role yes, yes. Um, to help everyone. Um, a, ma a matter of fact, during the flood, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, Masjid al Abidin, our mm -hmm. mosque, actually uh, sent in a container. Yes, I saw, uh, I saw that on the news uh, as well. To help and assist. Mm -hmm. And even to the other religious organizations, um, not Muslim organizations we're talking about, mm. our Christian brothers and sisters, yeah. and also Hindu brothers yeah. and sisters, they, they also, also played a, yeah, role, they play a role in helping, in every, helping everyone, people. and that shows the yeah. unity yeah. of our the country, uh, the, the collective effort, 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 effort yes. Yeah. and that yeah. demonstrates something very positive, yes. and, and we can yeah. learn from that, yeah, indeed. that when in the pandemic, we did not ask for it, it came in our midst, right. and I, I, as I said earlier, when these things happen, how do we respond? We respond with resilience, with resolve, mm. love, togetherness, mm. care, and Indeed. I think yeah. that's how we flourish. Yeah. And one, one thing I always mention um, in my sermons when I uh, speak to the people, uh, one, in, in order for you to be successful, um, in order for an organization, for example, to be successful, or a marriage to be successful, you need to have collective effort. Yes. And that is something we have witnessed and we've seen when the pandemic came. Um, everyone came out and they had a collective effort and had a collective input. Yeah. And that brings some amount of comfort um, in the hearts of people. And that yeah. relief a lot of people from difficulties and the hardship that they were going through. Yeah. And that is something that is very important. And yes. you, know, um, you know, we thank everyone for that effort that they have. And done so far. And Imran, another another point concerning the pandemic, and then mm. probably we can you know, discuss something else. The the key thing mm. with the pandemic is that the pandemic uh, teaches us, or we we learn from the pandemic, mm. the importance of usage of our time mm. in a meaningful way. True. Because mm. today we are alive, and tomorrow we can breathe our last breath. Yeah, we don't know At, when the time will in come. New York. Over 60 funerals we conducted. Friends, families, people that we prayed by side by side. Mm. But how, how, they, how, how, they, was that, how was your experience yeah. um, with regards to that? It was a tough moment. Mm. But through our unwavering faith and this love that we are yeah. talking about, it helps to relieve some of the pressure. Every morning, mm. two, three funerals, you go out, bury people, family members, having their loved ones hospitalized, not seeing them, and then you heard they die, and then you have to select 10 persons to pray the Janaza prayer. That is sad. People Very refer sad. referring to throwing atar on the box, mm. closed coffin. Because mm. you're not know, restricted. From you're restricted. Certain, certain, yeah. So, it was tough. And mm. I think we should learn a lesson about how valuable life is. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, utilize five before five. Your health before sickness comes. Mm -hmm. Utilize your health in a meaningful way before you are tested with sickness. Yeah. And utilize your life before death knocks at your door. Don't procrastinate. If you have something to do now, do it in the best of manner 
because tomorrow is not guaranteed for us. Jesus, he says, this world is comprised of three days. Mm -hmm. Yesterday that has passed and gone, mm -hmm. tomorrow which is not guaranteed, and today is all we have. So use it and use it wisely and use it constructively. Indeed, indeed. As we usher in this new year, 2022, yeah. um, I know as Muslims believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, um, our new year have already uh, um, it came, it had already gone. Yeah. The year 1442, after the Hijrah, the migration of the Prophet But generally, as the world um, bid farewell to the old year, we're now in the new year, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And so people are more receptive, receptive yeah. to this, um, this system. Yeah. What are some of the advice that you can give to us, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, and our brothers and sisters in humanity as well, um, as we bring the program to a close now, inshallah, what are some of the advice and some of the recommendations you can give to us to start this new year, inshallah? So, um, I'll start by saying, you know, somehow reaffirm what you mentioned that uh, while this is uh, the beginning of this uh, uh, a year mm -hmm. that somehow is not a part of our religion. Uh, we follow the lunar calendar, yes. and this is the Gregorian, Gregorian ca calendar. calendar. Yes. Yes. Um, many people plan their life activities around this time. Indeed. And it's, first of all, it is an opportunity that is, we should hold on to, because it's an opportunity for us to turn a new page in our life. And while many people may have be making resolutions hmm. this resolutions uh, generally it is not something foreign to our faith if you look in the glorious Quran there are terms that is used uh, ahd and mithaq mm -hmm. wa'ad promise it's a covenant that you make it's another that you are making that you will do certain things to better your life because no two days of a person should be the same you should always Indeed. Mm -hmm. somehow try to be a better person yeah like strive for a uh, better, better heights yeah. uh, you should not be stagnant true right right yeah. you should not be stagnant and that should I so, think that should be a general rule yeah that's a yeah, yeah it's a general rule yeah. so should we, should we should always try to improve our spiritual life mm -hmm. our economic life our social life be a better father be a better mother mm -hmm. be a better parent be a better Muslim be a better human being correct Right? So those are some of the things that we, we may make resolutions. A lot of people make resolutions and come again, nothing happens. Yeah. But we have to ensure when we make these resolutions that we work mm. uh, and have the result, you know, resilience, mm. uh, be committed, consistency, uh, consistency yeah. to ensure that we follow that path. Mm. A few points to look at is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important. Very important. Yeah. You can't plan ahead of you without thinking about your relationship with the divine, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a key point. You know, that's a key yeah, point. Yeah, very important. Because Allah is the best of planner. They plan and we plan and Allah is the best of planner. Mm. So why should we not involve Allah to be a part of our plan when He's the best of planner? Hmm. And he is the compassionate Lord, having him beside us, the merciful Lord. He's the Rahman, a Rahim. He's a sustainer. He's a compassionate. He's the Latif, the gentle one. You understand? Yeah. So having the Creator beside us, Ibn Tal Iskandariya, he talks about this, and he says that a person that plans their life without Allah or God being a part of their life. It is as if, basically, you build your house on a pile of, of, of sand in the seashore and the water comes in and demolishes the very foundation of that house. Yes. From the, you want your life foundation to be strong, then incorporate God. You incorporate the Creator. Uh, Rumi, he says, بِالْأَمْسْ كُنْتُ ذَكِيًا فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ غَيْرُ الْعَالَمْ فَأَمَّا الْيَوْمْ فَأَنَا حَكِيمٌ فَأُغَيْرُ نَفْسِي He says, yesterday I was smart and I wanted to change the world. But today I'm wise. I'm going to change myself. I'm going to be a better person. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, yeah, um, relationship with Allah, your relationship with the people around you. Mm -hmm. 
family relations. What is this life without family? There's too much pulling and talking among family members. Yes. Uh, because of the question, Imran, the things that we're seeing around us, even in the midst of the pandemic, come to conclusion that many has lost their humanity. Hmm. And the resolution that we ought to make is to find back that humanity that we have lost and that is divine in its nature because we were created in the state of fatra. Right. This purity, we have lost it because people become materialistic in nature. Greed. Hmm. And there is a, a need to rekindle relationships with yeah. people around looking the problem of racism is plaguing our community people indeed, indeed. look at others as and you know segregate based on color based on how you look mm. right based on your religion because you're different because you you pray different or you your attire is different i think if you want to know a man's relationship with God or with Allah mm. then look at how he lives with people mm. very important and that's why the Prophet said this I, th I think these are three golden rules in our faith in a hadith that I'm sure you're aware of and many are aware of but we have to put it in context the Prophet he says mm. Three relationships. Mm. Be mindful of God wherever you are. Yes. First thing I mentioned. That's what you body. mentioned earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Yeah. To inculcate, okay. you know, and have let Allah subhanahu wa taala play a part, part in your life and your decisions plan. and your plans mind. that you make. And when we say that, we don't mean for you to spend your whole whole day in the mosque. Yes. Right. Mm. That's not what it means. It means be mindful of God when you're at work. Be mindful of God when you're mm. doing your day-to-day -day chores. Yes, yes. Right? Mm. That consciousness and awareness is there. And then he says, follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Mm. And that can only happen through reflection, self-reflection. Mm. You know, you can only come to awareness of that you're doing something wrong if you're aware of your actions and how you can mend it. Mm. The first step of change is, is uh, to make a change to your bad ways or bad ways is to be aware that we do have a bad way. If we're in denial, we get nowhere. Yeah, indeed, indeed. We need to recognize that we err. Yeah, that um, we err. Yeah. Exactly. So the Prophet Sallallahu is saying to us uh, that when you do a bad deed, do not fall in despair. That we will forgive you. Mm. But follow that bad deed with a good deed. Men. And then the last point. But before we get to the last point, Sheikh, um, I, I listened to that hadith that you were talking about now. And follow up that bad deed with a good deed. Um, what the, the ulama, they mentioned that um, one good way in doing that is to actually follow up that bad deed with that good deed in the same manner that bad deed was committed. Yeah, so, for, for example, if we, would, we say something with our mouth or use our tongues to um, you know, say foul words or curse words, for example, then use the same tongue or the same mouth to uh, you know, recite some Quran yeah. or say a good word or give a, a, the salam to someone. So Mashallah. in that way, that's you a very follow, nice yeah, point. You follow up that bad deed with a good deed in the same manner, actually, or it's using the same organ that it yeah. was committed. So, um, so that is a very important point. Yes, and then the, the last thing, which is relevant to what we we're discussing about humanity, the Prophet ﷺ said, mm. "Wahalikun nas and nas, I say, and interface with people bihulkul hasan with good morals and ethics, high morals and ethics in your words, in your dealings, and." interact with people he did not say interact with Muslims right. or believe in people right. that share your faith interact with people, people general with general humanity in, general in good in good yeah. morals and yeah. subhanallah that is, so, um, that is very important she uh, so I, I think with the um, the second resolution or promise that we should make that I will be a better human being adopting these these traits, these lofty and beautiful traits. Alhamdulillah. Um, believe in viewers, brothers and sisters, we're actually out of time now uh, having this discussion with Sheikh Safraz. Alhamdulillah. Many of you would have known Sheikh from all of the good work that he had done so far through the Central Islamic Organization and other 
um, reputable uh, bodies um, helping to propagate the deen of Islam to many people, alhamdulillah. Um, Sheikh, um, you know, we having this discussion is so fruitful. Um, we actually out of time and I would like to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart to be here with us once again to have this beautiful discourse. I hope and pray, believe in brothers and sisters that you know you would have benefited tremendously from all of our points, all of our exhortation, um, the advice that has given by our dear and beloved Sheikh here. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, bless your effort, bless your family, bless your time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, reunite all of us in his genital firadaus. Jazakallah khairan. You know, I just want to take uh, two seconds or three seconds of your time. I just want to extend a salamu alaykum, special salamu alaykum to all our brothers and sisters and especially the imams. And I want to compliment them for the work that they're doing and, you yes. know, um, in ensuring the light of Islam remains inshallah uh, within our community and within the homes may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you and it's always a pleasure to be here in Guyana I might be living in, in New York for the past eight years but uh, my heart is always here indeed uh, and it's, it's, so. uh, it's good to have you um, here and to have you in our program Sheikh and once again thank you very much for your time and for yeah. your effort inshallah may Allah continue to bless you Gaffors, manufacturers of the perfect concrete hollow block in sizes 4 inches and 6 inches. Certified by the Ghana National Bureau of Standards and hydraulically tested by the University of Ghana to 2,000 pounds per square inch. Pallet packed and shrink wrapped for easy transportation too. So get your supplies of the best quality made concrete hollow blocks in Guyana and also get a 12.5% discount. For superior service, quality and competitive prices, visit Gaffors Mega Complex at Matdu and our outlets at Rose Hall, Kanji, Better for acting, memes, land of Kaden and Purika. Shopping in Lenora at VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road. Come in and enjoy great prices on the widest range of groceries, beverages, frozen meats and vegetables, and ice cream too, even food for your pets. Get detergent and bathroom soaps and cleaners, the full range, and all the brands. Pots and pans for the kitchen, cutlery, and crockery for dining. And all the household items you need to make home so comfortable. The ladies will love our cosmetics collection, perfect for gifts for special occasions and just what you promised yourself. VNP Supermarket 20 North Lenora Public Road, West Coast, Demerara. Kids need to be healthy, and taking care of them can be difficult. That's why at Bacchus Drugstore we stock the widest range in children's vitamins, tonics, formulas for colds, coughs and fevers and other healthcare products at the lowest prices. Remember, your kids are your future. Take care of them. Bacchus Drugstore, where good health counts. 
Gerde hasretin var Yürekler aşkınla çarpar Sensiz dünya bizlere dar Selam sana ey kutlu yar With a mission, faith and patience You convey the noble message Brought the light through your guidance Peace be upon you, my beloved Ya Habibi, Ya Muhammad Ya Nabi, salam alayka Ya Rasul